Let's be honest, your store design matters. And if you have a really ugly site, people are just gonna leave and they're not going to purchase from you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to customize your Shopify store design. As soon as someone comes to your site, they only have about seven seconds before they decide if they want to look longer on your site or leave. So those seven seconds really matter and design matters when it comes to that. You wanna make sure that your site is eye-catching and it really speaks to your ideal customer. So how do you do this? You really need to pick out your Shopify theme and make sure that it works based on what kind of imagery you have. If you have a lot of really great big images, then pick a theme that's going to highlight those. But if you don't have a lot of great product shots, then you want to make sure that you pick a theme that's not going to be heavily reliant on that. Once you've chosen your Shopify theme, then it's time to customize it. And this is where it's important to create different assets, choose your fonts and colors to make sure that it's appealing for your ideal customer. So this is super important, but a lot of times people kind of overlook the design step. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to actually customize your design in the back end of Shopify for both your homepage, collection page, and product page. So to get here, you're going to click on online store and then you'll see themes there from the list. So now that we are on the themes page, you can see your live theme here. Uh, this is what your customers are actually seeing whenever they come to your site, as well as your online store speed. We've done another video on how to speed up your site. So I will link that in the description below and in the info cards above as well. And you can also see the theme library. So you can upload your theme if you've purchased it somewhere else, or you can explore the different theme options available. So for example, if you click on explore free themes, you'll actually see a pop-up of all of the different free themes that are available here. The one problem with this is if you click into it, you can't really see how the site overall looks as well as how it looks on mobile. You can just kind of see the different styling aspects. So what I do recommend that you do is actually visit the theme store. So if we just click on this here, you can see the full theme store and this is both free and paid themes. So what I like to do whenever I'm trying to decide on a theme for a Shopify store is I'll actually go to all themes up here at the top. And then you can see the sidebar here of sorting options. So you can actually sort through and you can see, you know, based on you just want to see themes that are just for single products. So if you click on that, then it shows you just that product or specifications on the right hand side. So you can better narrow down what kind of theme that it is that you are looking for. So if we unclick this, let's just go ahead and go with a free theme and we can click on free here. And now we can see all of the different free themes that again, we did see in that pop-up already. But the difference is now we can actually click on the theme. We can again, see the different styles that it includes, as well as we can view the demo. So if we click on this here, we can now actually view the demo of the theme, see exactly how it looks, as well as a really important feature, which is seeing how it looks on mobile. So if we click on this mobile phone device, we can then see how it looks on mobile devices. So we also just posted a video about how important it is for mobile devices and stylizing your site. So I'll also link that below if you wanna get a little bit more information on how to make sure that your site is really performing well on mobile devices. So if you decided that you wanted to go with this theme, you would just hit add theme here. But let's go back to our Shopify store backend and we're just gonna go ahead and use the default Brooklyn theme that we already have set up. So you have a couple options. You can click on actions, you can rename the theme, duplicate it so that that way you have a copy of the original. You can also download the theme file and edit the code. So this would be if you knew exactly, you know, specific things that you could edit in or if you were a developer, you could go in and edit the code. You just wanna be careful here because you don't wanna make any changes that you're not going to be able to fix and then it's going to edit your site and you're gonna have issues. You can also change the languages of how things appear on your site. So this would be more technical terminology. So you can go in and 
do these different options. But what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be customizing this theme. So I'm just going to go ahead and click customize here. And now we can see here, we've got some default things added in on the left hand side that we can customize as well as this is the default setting. So we're going to start going through and doing these different options. I do want to mention real quickly that this is just a test site that I'm using for this video. So all of the images and products that I'm using are from a company called Rifle Paper Company. If you like any of the products or images that are featured here, definitely go check out their site at riflepaperco.com. So back to our site here, let's just start off first with the header area. So you can see here, this header area is going to be default and standard throughout our entire site. And that's right here with the logo that we will change out as well as our navigation. Also, if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see here there is a footer area that's going to be the same throughout our site as well. And then all of these areas in between are specific to this home page design. So we'll go ahead and do the header and the footer first, and then we can come back to the home page design. So let's click on header. And then we can see all of the options that are specific to this header. So first off, we can add in an image here. So we can hit select image. And I've already got a few added in, but you could just click upload and upload that from your computer as well. But I'm just gonna add our logo in, click on it and hit select. We can then see that we can change the width of this so we can make it bigger if we wanted, or we can make it smaller. All the themes are going to have different options based on the theme that you choose. So you're not gonna see exactly what I'm seeing in terms of the options here. So you'll just wanna go in and play around a little bit. We can also change the color for links and icons and have a transparent header. So right now we have, this is our big slideshow image and we have our logo and stuff laying on top of it. If we didn't wanna do that and we wanted it to be a white bar behind it or another color, we could just click on this here. And now we can see that's a little bit more prominent. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. If you were gonna have your logo over the homepage slideshow, this theme does have additional options like you can add a white version of your logo or change the header links and icons just to make sure that it shows up a little bit more. We can also see here we have different types for navigation if we wanted it to, how we wanted the navigation to display. We will just keep that as it is. We can also see we could change the menu out. So we just have one menu for the main menu area here, but we could go in if you had multiple different types of menus and you could change that out. And there is a secondary sidebar menu, which would, I'm guessing, show on mobile devices. So we'll just keep that at the footer menu for now. And lastly, we have different things here for the announcement bar. So that's this up here at the top. So we can choose to only show this on the homepage, change out the text, where it links to the colors of it, as well as if we just wanted to show it or not. So let's go ahead and turn that off for now, just so we can get everything a little bit higher up on the page. Once you make edits, you do wanna make sure that you hit this save button. You'll still stay in the editor here, but that way you can make sure that your changes are saved. So now I'll click on this arrow back to go to all the other settings. And now let's do the footer. So I'm gonna click on footer and it has zoomed us to the bottom of the page. Now we can choose if we want to show the payment icons, which you can see here, as well as a language selector and currency selector. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off for now, but we'll keep the payment icons on. And again, you can change the menu if you'd like. So if we go back here and let's hit save one more time, there are some additional options that you can get into and I wanna discuss that real quick before we actually go in and stylize our homepage. But we can click on theme settings at the bottom here and we can actually go in and change the colors and the fonts for the site. So this is going to change it throughout the site, not just on the homepage, this is gonna be your colors overall. So for example, we can come in and click on colors and you can see all of the different options that we have here. 
So for example, we have this newsletter and tables background, which this is a newsletter section right here. We could always come in and we can change this and you can see as we're moving this dot through here, it actually changes that color. If you knew what specific color you wanted to use, then you could go in and type in that hex color here, or you can say none to make it transparent. But you can also just kind of drag this around a little bit and stylize your color a little bit more. What's really cool about this is this is where you can really start to bring in the branding elements that's going to really make your site look more unique. So you can go in and start actually playing with the colors to match your branding as well as changing out the fonts. So I'm not going to go through and change all of these colors throughout. However, you can see how you can easily customize all of that. So if we click on this arrow back, we can now go in and do the same with typography. So we can see here our heading font. This is what's showing up here as well as some of our titles like this example product title. So if we click on change, we can then see a large list of all the different fonts that are available and we could click add more. So let's click on one of these fonts and we can see now it's instantly changing on the right hand side. So it's really cool. It's helpful to, to then go in. We haven't actually made the change on the site yet, but you can try out different fonts and play around with it to decide what it is that you want to go with. You can also change here. So this font is Arvo. We could click on regular below it and we have other options of we can make it bolder or italicize it and we can go in and make different changes once we've selected the font that we want. So once we're happy with that, we can just hit select and you can see by changing the font there, we've changed it here, we've changed it here, and we've changed it in a couple other areas that you can see throughout the site. So by just doing it one time, it's going in and it's carrying it throughout. Now we have this accent text, which you can see here. So we can change this. Maybe we want to actually keep this font. So let's go back to the newsletter, or that looks to be a different font there. So maybe we actually do want to keep this font, but we just want to change it to be a little bit less bold. We have these options here of do we want to capitalize it or space out the letters a little bit more. We can also again click on change and we can click on semi bold and we could just change this to regular. So we can see that gets a little bit lighter there as well and we can just hit select. So you can go through and you can make these changes throughout. So the body text, which you can see here, we could then change to maybe match this accent text as well. So instead of scrolling through, this is an alphabetical list. We can go back, we can see this font is starts with an M. So we can start typing it out and then now we'll see it show up from the list. And now we've got that switched out as well and we'll hit select. And you can also change the font size of this. So we'll keep that at 16 for now, but you can see how easy it is to go in and make these changes and stylize things. We've also now changed the top menu navigation by changing that font. So we'll just go ahead and hit save and we'll go back. So every theme has different options again that are available for it. So you'll see based on the theme that you choose all of your options here. The cart page is going to show up depending on if it is a specific type of page. So for example, if we click on cart here, right now it's set up as cart type. So it's taking us to a cart page. You can also though have a cart drawer. So this would be if we click on the cart now, it actually pops out from the right hand side. So different themes offer this kind of functionality. So you wouldn't actually ever have a cart page and it can kind of make it a little bit quicker to get to checkout. We can also enable the order notes. I think we may have to have something in the cart, but we would then see the order notes. Going back, you can then add in your social media handles and that'll then start showing the social media icons on your site. So if we just type in Facebook, now that we have that typed in, of course you would want to link to your actual Facebook page. You can see here it's automatically added this in with a link to it and it may add the icons in somewhere else on your site. 
You can also choose if you want to have the sharing options for people to easily share your product on your product page, but we'll get to that when we're customizing the product page. So let's go ahead and hit back. Your favicon is the icon that shows up at the top. So you can see up here with Rifle Paper Company, they have just an R symbol. So that's what's showing up there. And you can upload your own custom image for that. And lastly, we have checkout options. So this is important to customize just so it makes it unique for your checkout page. So to actually see what this is going to look like, we can click on this drop down menu up here and we can click on checkout. So this is what a customer would see whenever they actually have decided to purchase your product and they're going through the checkout page. So by default, it's not adding in our logo or any colors. So this is where you can actually go in and change that. You can also add in different stylized elements. So let's add in a background image for this banner so we can see how it looks. So we'll just hit select image and upload. And I'm just going to select a, an image that we already have, again, from Rifle Paper Company. And now we can see it has been added up here. So you could play around with what image looks best for that. We could select it, or if we wanted to, we could decide to edit the image and crop it a little bit to have it show up differently or remove it. You can also add in your logo. So for this example, with the banner, it would be a little bit harder to see over it. But if we remove the banner, it's going to actually have the logo below. And so now if we add in the logo, now we can choose how we want this to look and we can choose the positioning of it. So we could say we want this to be centered and we want this logo to be as large as possible. We can also go in again and we can add in an image to the background of the main content area, which is here, or the order summary over here as well as change the colors and the form fields. And again, you can change the typography and the colors for these different buttons. So definitely wanna make sure that you go in and you customize it so that it looks unique to your brand. And once they hit this checkout page, it's not totally different and kind of generic looking and it's still bringing that experience throughout. So let's go ahead and click on the back arrow and I'm going to click on again, to get out of the theme settings page. And let's click on the drop down here to get to the home page. Now that we are on the home page, we've gone in, we've stylized the header and the footer. So now we have these elements here that are on the actual home page. So if we look at it, we can see here we have a slideshow, then we have this rich text area, a collections list area, a featured collection, a featured product, and then are subscribed to our newsletter. So these are the options that have come already set up with this theme. We could choose other options by just clicking on the add section. And you can see here, we can add in other things. So we could actually say that we wanted to add in blog posts as well, and that'll automatically pull in the blog post. Looks like a lot of other things are added in. Let's see, they also have a map functionality. So we could add in a map and hours if we had a brick and mortar store, or we could also add in a video. Again, this is gonna be really specific based on the theme that you choose. But let's cancel out of this. And I wanna show you how to quickly go in and edit some of this. So it's gonna be just like how we edited our header and footer area, where we're just going to go in and select different options. So first let's start with the slideshow. So I just clicked in on it to actually open that. And let's click in on this first slide and we're going to select our image. So I'm gonna just hit select image and I'm gonna actually use the image that I had just uploaded for the checkout page and hit select. We can then choose how we want it to be positioned if we want it to be, so this is showing the second image and here's our first. If we want it to be positioned in the middle center, so we're getting a little bit of cropping just because this is a big image area and ours is a little bit more narrow. We could also choose if we wanted to have the text over it and have the text overlay. So you can see here, if we don't do the overlay and we click back to this, then it's a little bit harder to read. So you may wanna do the show overlay and make it a little bit darker. So let's actually real quick come back here and I'm gonna delete the second slide. So I clicked in on the second slide and I'm just gonna click on these buttons at the top to remove it 
just so we can keep looking at our slide. So now that we go back to the first slide that we were editing, we can see here whenever I change the overlay opacity, we can see how that instantly looks. So you can play with how you want that to look. We also have different options for the text. So we could have it aligned to the left, aligned to the right. We can change out the text itself here as well as choose a button. So right now we don't have a button um, because it's not linking anywhere. So if we click in on this here, we can actually choose to have it linked to different things like collections, products, pages, blog posts. So let's click on collections and I'm just gonna have it linked to our bestseller collection. So now we see the button show up here and we have the options of how to stylize this button. So again, we can choose to center align it and now we have got that set. If we change the image position, you can see that it actually will change how this looks. So right now it's middle center. If we change it to top left, now we can see more of the left hand side of the image. So you're going to have to play with your image positioning as well as make sure that you're adding in the correct size image for your different areas of your site. So let's go ahead and hit back. We can also change here how big we want our slideshow to be. So right now it's set as full screen. So I can choose to actually adapt this to first image. So now it makes it smaller and we see the full image. So that looks a little bit better there and it's showing the image a little bit more crisp. And we could choose if we wanted to auto rotate slides and how fast we wanted to do that. So if you had multiple slides that you wanted to add in, you could repeat the process by just clicking on add slide, but let's just keep it at one for now. So next is this rich text area, which you can see here. So we could select this and then go in add a heading if we wanted to and text and also change the size of that. We'll go ahead and leave that there for now. Our next area is collection list. So you can see here we have five different collections showing up. So right now on this site for test purposes, I actually only have two collections that I have enabled on this site. So we can go in and we can actually delete a few of these. So we'll go in and click on collection and I'm just going to click on the arrows at the top to remove it. And that way we just have the collections that we need. You can see though, as I'm deleting the collections, they're changing sizes. So at first it was five and you had two up top, three at the bottom. Now there's three, so they've made them smaller side by side. So once we delete this one, we'll see that they are a little bit bigger and still side by side. So if we click on collection, we can then select our collection here. So I'm gonna hit select collection and I'm gonna choose one of our collections that we've already set up and I've added an image in for. So I'll hit select and I can hit the back arrow and select the other one that we have here as well. So now we have those set up. We can also come in here and we can change this collection list. So we can say shop our favorites or, or something like that or we could just delete that and now it doesn't actually show up the collection title. So you have things that you can play with there. If we continue down the page, we can then do the featured collection. So from here, we can say, you know, shop our best sellers and then choose the collection that we want to showcase. So I'm gonna choose gift wrapped and hit select. Now we can see that we have an option of, this is a grid style layout of it's showing us our six products. We could also choose to do a collage. So it's kind of changing the overall styling and making a little bit more dynamic on the homepage. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. The next option that we have is our featured product. So if we select on that, we can then come in and choose a specific product. So let's hit select product. And since we did gift wrap above, we'll choose one of our other products that we have. So I also added in some card sets from them. I'll hit select. And now we can choose how we want that to showcase. If we want to have the social sharing buttons here, or we can turn it off. We can also choose if we want to show the vendor. So I can click on that there. And now we can see we see Rifle Paper Company, as well as if we want to show the dynamic checkout button. So that would be the 
if you had set up on your site like PayPal, you could see the PayPal button there. So you can choose if you want to have that still there or not. And of course they can click on full details to go to the individual product page. The last section of our homepage is our newsletter. So if we click on that, we can already see how we had changed the colors there and our theme settings, but now we can go in and actually change the text to stylize however you want. And if someone does actually go in and create an email address and subscribe to your list, they'll then be added in to your Shopify account as a customer. And depending on your email provider, whether you're using Shopify email, or a third party email provider like MailChimp or Klaviyo, they will then be added into your list that you've got set up there. So I'm gonna just keep that for now, but one really cool thing once you've got everything loaded in is you can actually change the order. So this was just the default order that we have. However, if we hover over this, we can actually click on it to drag it and then we can drop it somewhere else on the page. So you can see here, we can drop it and it actually showcased there. So let's move some things around. So let's actually do our best sellers underneath our slideshow so that we get people to the products faster. Maybe after that, we will actually do our newsletter. So drag it and drop it there just to break up the page a little bit with color. Then we've got rich text as well as our different collections. So let's feature maybe a product after the newsletter, then do our rich text and then our collections. So now we've gone in and stylized it and made it more unique, as well as added in our custom images just to stylize it more for our branding. So it looks a lot better overall. So you can do this same kind of process for different pages on your site. You can see all of the pages that you can customize in this drop down menu here. So if we click on this, we can then go into a product page. So let's go ahead and click product pages. And now we can see a specific product page. Again, your header and your footer options are throughout your entire site, but now we have the option of product pages and product recommendations. So if we click on product pages, we can see here, again, we have different options. We can choose to show the product vendor. We also have the enable product sharing. So maybe we didn't wanna do the product sharing on the home page, but we do wanna have that on the product page so we can keep that there. We could also choose if we wanted to do a quantity picker and if we wanted to make that a button or a drop down. Again, the add to cart button, we can change the sizing of that, of how we want it to look, as well as if we had multiple different images, if we wanted it to be stacked or if we wanted it to show thumbnails of our additional images that we had. I just have one image here showing up though. But we could also choose if we wanted to do image zoom. So this would be if we hover over this, you can see the plus icon, we click on it, we then see a bigger version of the image. So I actually have a video showing about the specific sizes that you need for your product images if you have image zooming for your site, or if you don't, as well as how to resize your images in the back end of Shopify. So I will link that in the description below and in the info cards above if you're interested in that video. And if we click on the back arrow here, we can then see product recommendations. So this is this you may also like section. We can choose if we want to showcase this on the site and we can also change the name. So let's go ahead and hit save again. So now if we click on this drop down, we'll go in and we can actually look at how the next page we want to do. So we could do collection pages. So this is our best sellers collection that it's showing up. Or we could also go in and we could choose one of our collections that I've got set up in the navigation. So I could just choose from here our gift wrapped page. And this is showing all of our gift wrap options. So again, we can see collection pages over here. We can choose to show the collection image. So that's something that I've added in in the back end of Shopify whenever I was setting up the collection. It kind of pushes everything further down the page, and ideally you wanna have everything above the fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. We could also turn on collection sorting or tag filtering. So this is where people can sort automatically if they wanted to then show the price by low to high uh, based on the date of how new the product is, and you can let them sort by themselves. 
or if you had tag filtering, like you had all of your products tagged that had flowers in them, tagged floral, you could have tag filtering here so that they could sort through all of that. We can also again choose how we want it to be stylized. So if we want it to be in a collage, like how it is showing up here, or if we wanted it to be on a grid in this section. So it doesn't matter that we chose a collage on the homepage, we could then choose a grid style here. So you can make these changes that are specific just to this page and not gonna be universal overall. So we'll hit save. And again, if we click on this drop down menu, you could then go in and you can make, continue to make these changes for different areas of your site. You could do this for your collections list, which would show all of the different collections and their product images. You could also do this for your blog, your cart page, checkout page, which we already did, as well as individual pages that you have set up on the site. So for example, we have a contact us page and this theme doesn't look to have any options on the contact us page. However, we could go in and add in if your theme had that. Some themes will have a you know, map selection, things like that on that page that you could go in and customize there. So you'll just go in and start customizing all of this based on whatever theme you've chosen and the options that are available. Once you're done with that, again, you can hit save and you can then go back if we hit this exit button at the top we can then always click on this eyeball in the left hand menu and then we can actually see what your site looks like live. So this is how your customer is seeing it and you could always resize this window or see it on your mobile device to see exactly how that's looking. I definitely recommend checking it out on different devices if you have access to them like a tablet or a phone just to make sure that it's looking good overall. So we just went over the design aspect of your Shopify store. There is of course a lot more that goes into setting up your Shopify store though, in terms of setting up your products, your collections, pages, all of those kinds of things. So if you're interested in a step-by-step -step of how to set up everything like that, we do have an online course called Ecom in a Weekend that shows you step-by-step -step how to set up your Shopify store in just a weekend. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I will put a link in the description below as well as the info cards above, and we would love to have you join us for the course. I hope you found this video helpful. We've got a couple different 2021 growth strategies that we have in a playlist over here, and you can check those out in terms of how to grow your Shopify store once you've got it designed and looking great and you've got it launched. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We post new videos every week all about Shopify and how to grow your online store.